Hey, Leafs Converts, Hockey World, what is going on? This is the Leafs Convo Podcast. My name is Norman James. Thanks for being aboard for this episode. The hockey season is just around the corner. I can smell it. The sweat from the gear, the smell of the pucks, the ice, the sticks. Mmm, delicious stuff. Can't wait to have more. You've engaged in a Mike's Mailbag segment for this edition of the Leafs Combo. You submitted your questions on social media as well as the YouTube comment section using the hashtag AskMike. So Mike's about to get into the questions and the thoughts and concerns you have about your favorite hockey team. So let's go. Mike's ready. I'm ready. I know you are too. The Leafs Combo starts right now. And here he is, the one and only Michael Ogello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, Norman. How are you? Uh, Not too bad. Just transporting the kids from place to place, doing what I have to do as a parent, getting ready for school. The kids aren't ready, but I am. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's it's that time of year like labor day is like for 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 parents and for you know and for me who does a lot of traveling you know, um the the school buses on the road starting this week and next week with schools it, it slows things down so you have to sort of you know take that into consideration when you're driving long distances like i'll be for most of the year going up to toronto for leaf games are you telling me you have a lead foot Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying you have to accommodate for the fact that school buses will stop on main thoroughfares and every everything stops behind them and on the other side of them. So you have to basically, you know, make sure that you carve out another 10 or 15 minutes because that's what you'll run into. Thank you very much for being Mr. Safety. Um, you're going to be the expert today. It's the Q&A segment of the Least Convo podcast. Hashtag Ask Mike. Uh, we put out some feelers the, over the last 24 hours, and boy, the response is pretty amazing. Are you ready to go, my friend? I'm ready. Trevor Hickey at Rock Metal Fiend. Is there any chance in your mind, Mike, that Josh Levo makes the team full time? I think he'll make the 23 man roster, but the question is, will he play? And that's been the question the last two years. And I think he's in the mix, but if you look at it right now, if you calculate the depth chart, um, you know, it's Tyler Ennis, Levo, Casper Kapanen, um, you know, they're, they're sort of in the mix for the, uh, the wings on the fourth line. And I mean, they bring in Tyler Ennis on a, on a one-way deal after he gets bought out by Minnesota. And he, you know, he has been a, a three or four time 20 goal scorer. So, you know, he might be a luxury to have on the fourth line if he regains, you know, anything were close to his top form when he was at the Sabres. And Casper Kapanen is, you know, we know he's an up-and-coming player. I mean, Levo's going it's, it, it's to be tough for him to – I mean, I think he'll make the 23 if he stays with the Leafs. But if he doesn't make it, you know, they're not going to send him down because they don't want to lose him for nothing. But I, I, I have a feeling that Kyle Dubas, if he doesn't make it this time, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for – them to move him elsewhere and maybe get something that can help him. I mean, he's a good, he's a good kid and a good young player. And I think elsewhere he could score 15, you know, maybe 20 goals if he got regular ice time, but I just don't know whether he'll get that with the Leafs. Being a part of this organization from the get go and hoping to be a contributor in some capacity and the Leafs bring in players who he has to fight to get a job for, you know, it's, it's incredible. And, it has to be demoralizing. Yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe Tyler Innes is that 13th forward. Maybe he's the guy who you know, is the veteran guy who will sit in the press box and they will give Levo an opportunity. You know, if they give him an opportunity on the fourth line, and that's the thing though, the, how much opportunity in terms of ice time will the fourth line get when you have Matthews, Tavares and Kadri as your top three centers and those lines you know, I've, I've actually heard some people who think that they should go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen because, you know, they can ro- they could rotate the fourth line wingers, play them with Tavares, play them with Matthews and have an extra defenseman who can be a specialist. So, I mean, nothing, nothing is, you know, anything is up for this team. They, they will, they will try anything and Babcock is inventive and so uh, is Dubas. So we'll, we'll see what happens after training camp. God love fans, Mike. They have wild ideas for this team. Thankfully, they go as far as Twitter, and that's about it. This is the Leafs Convo Podcast. I'm Norman James. This is a QA and a segment. Mike Agello taking your questions. Hashtag AskMike on social media. Dylan Morrow. Mike, with all of the offensive firepower on the Leafs, who do you think will lead the team in points 
bonus question. How many points will they get? Wow. Well, I know it's yeah, just speculation. We throw something out there, Mike. That's we'll, tough. we'll hold I, you to it. Sure. I, I mean, I, I just have a feeling that it's going to be a battle back and forth between Tavares and Matthews. And if you look, I, I think Marlo Neander is better offensively as a, as a combo uh, the, as the wingers for Matthews than Marner Hyman. And that's not say, t- taking anything away from Mitch Marner, but you know, Zach Hyman's, I think he's a 40 to 45 point forward at best. So I, I, I would give Matthews cause I think every, all the offense on that line is going to run through him. I would give Matthews the odds on to be the leading scorer for the Leafs this year. Well, he was over a point per game last season. Unfortunately, injury um, took a big chunk of his season away. I mean, he could have had maybe close to 90 points. However, when you're um, averaging over a point per game, you're doing pretty well and you're getting a lot of respect. And you know what? Let's see if Austin Matthews can play a full season. Maybe he even hits 100 points if he's you know, locked in with guys like Marner and um, Tavares and that power play goes nuts. Uh, here's a question from Darren B. Mike. What's the game plan for trading Jake Gardner? Here we go again. Who is the agile stay-at-home defenseman we need and can get? Go for it, Mike, real quick. Well, I mean, I think that there is no game plan for trading Jake Gardner because if they had, if they were going to trade Jake Gardner, I think they would have done it already. And I, Kevin Allen on a recent Hockey Buzzcast made the point, and we sort of have a friendly bet on this. He's like, if the Leafs are contending, if they're – in a position to finish in the top two or, you know, even third in the Atlantic. And they have, they think they have a legitimate chance of winning the Stanley cup this year. Then the last thing they're going to do is trade Jake Gardner, even if he's an expiring contract, because, you know, uh, you know, he, he'll be basically that own rental like they did with Van Reams, Dyke and Bozak. And that's against my philosophy. I would, you know, if you can't sign him, if you know that you're not going to be able to afford signing him, then I would move him now and see if you can get somebody who can play in his place. But that probably is not going to be the philosophy of the Leafs. So right now, I think there is no scenario where they trade Jake Gardner. Jesse submitted a question. Um, do you think there are any PTOs getting handed out for a defenseman? Well, I think what they're they're saying is, are they going to have uh, Marley's players who are on the cusp, like Justin Hall, like Freddie Gauthier, are they going to rely solely on them to be the challenge for those positions, or are they going to bring a veteran player on a PTO like they did with they brought Roman Polak in on a PTO and then they, then they signed him. They, you know, Mason Raymond a few years ago, they brought in on a PTO and they signed him. I I think there's a chance because right now, you know, the bet, and I've specified that there are like three real battle areas off on the Leafs uh, roster right now, fourth line center, bottom pairing defense and and backup goaltender, and they have enough backup goalie. So there's not going to be anything there, but you could see them conceivably add a veteran body, uh, like a Kevin Bieksa, and I, I have, don't have any inside info on Bieksa being the guy, but somebody like him, a veteran guy who could, they could plug in and even have as a seventh or eighth defenseman in case of injury, they could move him into the lineup and a fourth line center. Right now it's Par Lindholm, Freddie Gauthier, and Josh Juris. And I, I don't know whether Freddie Gauthier is a uh, realistic fourth line center in the NHL after the way he played in nine games last year. I know he played well for the Marlies and maybe they'll give him an opportunity, but it, I, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of them going out, you know, signing a Antoine Vermette or somebody, some veteran like that on a PTO. I mean, Troy Brower just signed a one-year contract today. There are veterans out there that still can be effective and it's possible that they add one of those guys. Uh, Kyle Outridge, he's a good friend of ours, contributes to, the Leafs Convo podcast with great content. Does Justin Hull get a, an extended look out of camp? I think he'll get a look. I think they'll give him every opportunity because I think that uh, bottom pairing right side defenseman is the spot that's open. I mean, right now it's Riley and Riley and Hainsey, Zaitsev and Gardner and Dermott as uh, I think are five that are locked. And then it's, you know, Connor Carrick may have the, lead going into training camp. But I think, you know, Igor Ozaganov, as we talked about in the last, uh, the last uh, combo or Justin Hall, who's also a righty, they'll get opportunities. And if they play well, you know, then um, it's very possible. Now remember the, the Leafs have to 
they're probably going to carry either seven or eight defensemen, depending on how many goaltenders they have to carry on the roster, because they may be afraid of losing Garrett Sparks on waivers. And if they carry seven defensemen, it might be have to be somebody who can play both the left and right side. And a guy like Callie Rosen can do that. A guy like Hall is primarily a right hand shot. If they go with eight defensemen, he, I believe his waivers are up. He's not waiver exempt. So he might make the top eight simply because they don't want to lose him. But that's who, who knows. Mike, do you know everything? Like no. you're omniscient. Like it's no. so unbelievable. We can ask you anything. Nobody knows. And you can, and, yeah, and you can go on um, for minutes, if not hours, about that uh, question or topic. Uh, Stumpy OT winner. Ask Mike. He used the hashtag. Good stuff. Hey, Mike, do you think it's possible one or two of the big three are already signed and they are waiting to announce their signings, all three together? I've heard I've heard that 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 scenario because I, I you know, they're, they're saying that. Um, they don't want a repeat of the Edmonton scenario from last year where McDavid was signed to the $12.5 million contract and that immediately or automatically boosted the leverage of Leon Dreisaitl to get $8.5 million. Um, I mean, we know that Nealander has talked about management being patient and it, that could mean that they have a deal in principle, but they just haven't announced it yet. They, you know, We know that Matthews is negotiating and he said something on the weekend about, you know, he just wants to, you know, he wants to play, you know, the, the, his agent and the management are talking. It could be a contract signed before the season, during the season, after the season, he's just going to concentrate on playing, which is a good philosophy to have. But I think the, the Leafs would prefer to get all of them signed er, earlier rather than later, because if Matthews puts up a 40, 45 goal season and Marner does 90 points or something like that, it's going to be, even more difficult to get them on a as, as reasonable a, a, a cap hit as possible. If and when the Leafs do win the Cup within the next five years, are Matthews, Marner, and Nylander on the team? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, if it's four or five years, I would say the odds of all three being on the roster are probably less than 50%. Because um, I, I'm still, I still have a feeling that Nylander is going to end up as a bridge deal, um, because they may want to get Marner signed. Now, if, if it is, if not, if they sign him to a long term extension, then you know it may be a situation where they're going to have to spend money on other players, and they're going to have to choose one of the three. And I think of those three, you know, Matthews is number one, Marner is number two, and Nylander although being a very good player is number three. He, I think he's the, the most disposable, but that doesn't mean he's not valuable. Just wanted to revisit a question from Gary McAllister. Um, Jeremy Brocco, mm-hmm. what's his future with the Leafs? I, I think that Jeremy Brocco is an NHL player. Now, I, I know that I, I think I ranked him as number five on the Leafs prospect pool. And I have a lot of, I mean, I have a lot of time for Jeremy Brocco because he's extremely talented offensively, and he didn't get a chance to show that for most of last year with the Marlies until, um, you know, Kapanen was called up in January. They called up Andreas Janssen in March, and at that point, for the last month of the season, Brocco played power play time and he played more of a top six, top nine role, and he scored over a point per game. So I think with opportunity, because earlier in the season he was sitting out sometimes, he was playing on the fourth line, and he's not a fourth line guy. He's a top six player, and I think a very good playmaker. I, I've said, and I know that um, Russ Cohen, who's a, a good friend and somebody who is on the Hockey Buzzcast, um, and has you know scouted Brocco and. Um, you know, he's from Long Island, and and Russ is also from Long Island, so there would be it might be a little bit of bias there, but he says that. Brocco would be the absolute perfect right winger for Austin Matthews. They played together in the U S national development program. Uh, I think they played on the same line in the under 18s. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that, but he, the, he, him being a playmaking winger with a shooting center like Matthews is a perfect fit. Now it, that might be a year or two down the line. If the Leafs do have to trade Nealander, which I don't think they have to, but Brocco is a, is a talent. So I think, He'll show his talent this year in the AHL with an increased role, and I think he'll be in the NHL within two years. It's nice for Kyle Dubas to know he doesn't have the pressure of having to 
retain guys like Nylander knowing that there are young players within the organization developing and, you know, chomping at the bit to take Nylander's spot if, you know, he goes somewhere else, right? It's good for an organization to have options. And I'm, you know, I, by no means am I saying they're going to trade Nylander. I'm just saying, you know, if, if down the road, if, you know, two years down the road, the Leafs have, you know, gotten to the first or second, you know, second round of the playoffs and that missing piece on defense is what's keeping them from advancing further, then the organization is going to have to make tough decisions. If they have some success and Neilander is a big part of that, then he's going to stay. But I, I think that, you know, Kyle Dubas is smart enough to be open-minded to reading the landscape of what the team has done and making adjustments accordingly. Uh, last question, a longtime listener, Eli Cohen. Mm. Why do NHL free agents rush to sign July 1st and baseball free agents take their time until they sign? It's a different dynamic uh, depending on the league. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in baseball, it's the teams that are slowing things down. It's the teams that are you know holding back their big offers until – you know, February or just before, you know, just before spring training because they want to save as many dollars as they possibly can. I mean, J.D. Martinez, who you could make an argument being the possibly the American League MVP if it wasn't for Mookie Betts, um, I don't think he signed until January. There was just a, a lot of patience when it came to, and, and, and traditionally that's the way it lays the last few years in baseball. You know, you had players like uh, Neil Walker and Lance Lynn and uh, you know, who are not on the Yankees who waited until, who had to wait until you know, almost during spring training to sign with, with teams. You're not going to see that uh, in free agency and hockey they're you know, they're going to go out. Usually the big ones are, you know, remember there's the five day window where these teams can talk to these players, agents, and that I think it has advanced the ball and teams want to get their, uh, their, you know, their ducks in a row and sign their players. And frankly, after a long season, you know, they want to get their business done in the first week to 10 days of July, and then go on vacation for a few weeks before they, uh, you know, to, you know, as a taste to take a break for the summer. I like it because it's part of the show too, right, Mike? I mean, you have the action, you have the Stanley Cup being awarded, you have the NHL awards, you have the draft, and then July first, it's an integral part of the entire hockey package. Exactly, it's right, right in a row, and then you have usually the. I mean, this year the the Leafs had their development camp before July one. In previous years, they'd had it after July one, and then you know. Basically, by by the 10th to 14th of July, most of the big free agents have been signed. And again, there's there's that that six to seven week gap of you know really significant news. Michael, thank you very much for the wisdom and knowledge. Go rest that brain. We're going to need you real soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Norman. That's a wrap for this edition of Mike's Mailbag, but we'll have another one coming up soon enough. I want to know, how do you listen to us? Is it YouTube? Is it a podcast platform? Spotify, iTunes, Anchor, Podbean? Let me know either on social media at I Am Sports Heart or in the YouTube comments section. We couldn't do this without you. We're over 1,300 subscribers now on YouTube and growing every single time Mike and I collab for a podcast. We'll be back soon. Don't forget, hockey is so close, and we have so much great content in store just for you. For Mike Agello, I'm Norman James. Thanks for listening. The Leafs Combo Podcast is out.